then if, if, yeah, if anyone gives up on this team, they haven't seen us play a whole lot this year. Um, and, and it starts with uh, what Clayton did, short rest and, you know, leaving it all out there. And, uh, you know, everyone fed off that. And obviously with the Adrian, Homer, and a lot of at-bats, and obviously, you know, Andre coming off the bench, getting that big hit right there, and obviously with Chase, and it just, you know, epitomizes our ball club. To the left. Can you walk us through the uh, seventh inning and why send Kershaw back out there in the seventh and why remove him when you, when you did? Well, I, I think that right there with, with Kirsch, um, at that point in time, pitch count, throwing the ball really well, and, um, you know, where our pen was at in that state, uh, he's our best option. And uh, for me, um, I like the way he was throwing the baseball. And when I went back out there, I wanted him to get Harper. And so, um, you know, there was uh, ambush, Espinosa base hit, and, you know, he got the, uh, the ground ball infield hit from Turner. And then so for me, you look at who we have, and um, I think that Clay's our best option. And it was a great battle between those two guys. And um, at that point in time, I wanted to get the right-hander on Worth. You're right, Dave. Uh, going back to the off season, you know, it, from outside the organization, it looked like Chase Utley was done. He's not coming back. And then you make the decision last week to bring uh, Andre Ethier on the playoff roster. Two veteran guys, back to back names. Certainly, it paid off today. It did, and, and I think that that's the one thing with uh, obviously Chase. He's he's risen to many uh, occasions and rises to the moment, and. You know, as bad as his at-bats might have been earlier in the game, you know what, he just doesn't uh, scare off and he keep, keeps competing. And so uh, I'll take my chance with Chase anytime. And um, with, uh, with Andre, you know, for me, the small sample in September meant nothing. It was more the at-bat quality, and that's what I told him from the beginning. And I knew he was going to play a pivotal role in, you know, each of these series. Do you have any uh, clarity on the Game 5 pitching situation? No, you know what, uh, we didn't use Julio, so it's going to be uh, a collection of arms. You know, and I, I think that, uh, you know, we talked about Rich is an option, obviously, um, but so is Julio, and, um, you know, how we want to strategize to win game five, we're going to kind of talk through it, but it's nice now that uh, we didn't have to go to Julio, so he's certainly an option, and we've got, a, you know, some guys in the pen that didn't pitch tonight, today, so... Um, We've got uh, some good options. In, in that case, how much does the off day help? And is it fair to say that we could see both Rich and Julio in Game Five? That's fair. That's fair. You know, and I think the off day is uh, is huge for us, just to uh, reset for for Game Five, and also just to kind of get our our guys in the pen to reset and, and uh, you know get back to uh, you know recover from that off day. Yeah. To right, Dave. Dave, the wacky ebb and flow once again of this game really encapsulated the entire season and they were prepared as you said yesterday this team is prepared for this for these moments and they'll be prepared Thursday in their house yeah the, we, we that goes without saying that they'll be prepared but uh, you know us playing on the road to win one game and um, I like our guys you know I think that we've been up against some adversity this, this year, but um, you know, even when they came back and scored the three runs to tie it, there was no uh, quit in us, and um, you know, just guys having big at bats. Tier Latin Dave. When when you're making the decision to go with Kershaw in this game, is the thought at least partly that without a victory in Game Four, Game Five doesn't exist, so all the marbles are in this one. That that's that was that was a thought. Um, you can never go wrong with uh, putting the baseball in his hands. Uh, but the, the state of our pen after yesterday played a factor as well. And trusting Clayton giving us a very good chance to win the game today and also going deeper into a game played, other fact, played a factor as well. Uh, Puig on that third strike, what if the umpire possibly could have said that, that, said that he was perhaps right? No, you know, Tom said he saw it. He said he saw it well, and um, so he didn't need to ask for help right there. And... Uh, obviously, we saw it differently, and so uh, that that was that was it. Anything else for Dave? Uh, in the back here. Uh, talk about Andre Ethier's hit today. Just as uh, he's done often as a pinch hitter coming through in a situation that, for most of his career, he didn't play. 
he, he was a regular and, and he's been a pretty good pinch hitter for you here. He's been a great pinch hitter and you know the stuff that he does on the bench that doesn't go seen um, is, is huge. But I think that it's just understanding where he's at uh, as far as his role on this club this year. And, uh, you know, he's got a piece about it and he prepares like no one else. And so, you know, regardless of the result, I know he's going to be prepared. And what he does each day, um, whether it be shagging balls for two groups or the batting practice or tee work and, and things like that, that's what people see and, and learn from. So there's a lot of things that Dre brings to our club. Take three more. Hey, what does it say about Kenley Jansen, the way he bounced back today? Yeah, you know what, Kenley, it, it was, uh, you know, one of those things that you can't be perfect every day. But, you know, his resiliency to come back after yesterday and to have that short memory that the great closers have to have, no surprise. And, you know, he, he rises to the, to the moment. What's your right to you? Uh, Kershaw just said that the game mentally exhausted him. Do you feel that same way? I do. I do. And, um, you know, you just... It, it, yeah, and, and that's the thing is, uh, you know, every time he takes the mound, it's one of those things, and that's one of the challenges that we talk about in our clubhouse is after any game, whether it be a playoff game or a regular season game, you should be not only physically but mentally exhausted. And the thing is his conviction, his preparation, all leads to an outing, each outing. And for Clayton to leave every bit of himself out there, you know, speaks to, that's why he's great. That's why he's the best pitcher on the planet. I meant that you feel both well, men, you yourself. And, so. yeah, um, I'm a little spent myself. So the off day is going to do not only our bullpen some, some good, it'll do me some good, too. We'll finish up with Tim here on the right. Dave, you may have covered this, but so much of the series uh, up till now had, had sort of circled around their left-handed relievers against your left-handed hitters or creating those matchups. At any time in the bottom of the eighth there, as you were starting to stack lefties, um, <clears throat> were you thinking in the back of your head, all right, when are they coming, when are they coming? Well, I, I, I knew that, you know, Solis has been used, was used a lot yesterday. And um, for me, just kind of understanding that the guys that they had left in their pen were right-handed, um, Trainin, uh, Melanson, and Kelly, that weren't used uh, a ton. And so there's that balance of, deploying all your right-handed bats to then leave your right-handers in the game or kind of playing the cat and mouse matchup game and picking your spots. But yeah, you know, I think that we were fortunate in some of the matchups that worked out well for us.